Just a quick video to demonstrate my workflow using Koala within AUM to basically make it a complete resampling station. So on screen at the moment, channels two and three are purely relating to getting the microphone input. You can see when I talk, the little green dot comes on and then side chaining anything that comes out of channel one so that when I'm talking, the volume of that's going to duck so that you can still hear what I'm saying. So ultimately, effectively this channel one is all we're focusing on at the moment. Ignore two and three because they're purely for the microphone. So that said, let's load Koala into the secondary bus. Now the reason I'm going to put it there, the reason I'm putting it there rather than up here is that I want to be able to send audio in and out of Koala rather than just out. So I'm going to, to demonstrate that at the top, I'm going to create a mix bus and I'm going to call it K for Koala because that's easy to remember. And then I'm going to send a small amount of my voice using a bus send. So hopefully that wasn't too quick. So if we go down to on inserts and effects, we go down to send bus send and I'm going to send bus to Koala. So all that's doing is taking whatever hits this bus here and putting it over into there into the input of Koala to demonstrate that. If I go into sample, so anything I say now gets recorded directly into Koala. Anything I say now gets recorded directly into Koala. I don't want to send any more data from my microphone in and we'll use this as a little bit of a starting point. Anything I say now gets So we'll take a small amount of this. So you can hear it's a tiny fraction. And what that does is it creates effectively like a little oscillator. Nice enough. So that's our starting point. Now, obviously, if you wanted to tune that, if I just put a tuner on there, that's going to tell me what note that particular single cycle is in. So if we just move this out of the way. So that's in a B if I wanted to just say. Okay, so now I've got that tuned. And that means that obviously any sound that I play from here, this middle note is going to be a C. So everything that I resample essentially should be that. And the reason I've put on the attack and release is obviously I don't want it to be too clippy. It's actually not too bad on that, but I don't want the sound just to die because it's going to sound better when I resample it with a more natural decay on it. So now what I want to do is add a new channel. I'm just going to grab that and move it over there so that we can keep them next to one another. And I'm going to add the node again. Now I don't need to reload a new instance of Koala. I want to add a multibus. So I'm going to go in there and select this Koala. So that you see this little number two here, that's showing me that the sounds that's coming out of there is channel two of Koala. So if I go into this sample here, and change that to channel two. If I mute that channel, no audio is coming out. And then I unmute it. So you can see that's coming out of there. Don't need this tuner anymore. So let's get rid of that. Now, as we did with the original microphone, I'm going to create a node here and I'm going to create another one. And the bottom one's going to be a bus send. So I'm going to go that bus send, bus K. Now, anything that I put on Koala channel two is going to go through this bus send and into Koala on channel one. Now, the reason I've got an extra node in there is so that I can add another effect. So I'm going to go for tone stack, which is going to give me sort of a, a range of guitar options. Obviously not just for guitar, and that's the beauty of it. You kind of 
process a lot of other stuff on there. So press this little jester's hat at the bottom, and that gives us that sound. Okay, let's try another one. Don't really have a fixed idea of what I'm after. The vibrato is quite interesting. Okay, that'll do. Now I'm just gonna, I just realized if I press on here, put that mix bus onto M, that's my master bus. And that means that it'll also do the side chaining on my voice if I press on anything on here. So that's Actually not a vast amount, but it drops the volume a bit. I'm not gonna play around with the settings. I'll just try to avoid talking when I'm playing the music. So now if I create a sequence, so if I press record here, then I'm going to need to press play on the transit. So I'll extend it to two bars just in case so that it doesn't repeat before I've captured what I want to. Now, in order to record that in, obviously I'm just going to the sample. I'm going to press on an empty sample spot. Make sure that's back to the beginning. And then as it comes around, it wasn't quite at the beginning. So that's fine. I'll stop recording. And then I shall edit that sample. I'm going to just crop that to that. So now if I send it back on channel two, I can send it back out either to something else on here. Perhaps I want to do that. Or maybe I'd want to put it on a filter, perhaps. Uh, in fact, I'll use this one. So then all I'm going to do is in the sequence, I'm going to drag that down to the next one. So that instead of looping this sound, I'm looping this one. And you can hear the effect that that filter is making already. So I'll take it away. So it's chopping off a lot of the high. So I've got it set as a low pass filter at the moment. I'm going to have that loop. And then as it comes back around, it'll then start giving us some, there we go, some sound to work with. So I'm going to turn up the resonance. Now, what I can do with the filter is I can increase the interest and add some little extra elements by putting a bit of the envelope on the filter. So the filter will repeat effectively. So you can hear that. I'm going to change the speed of that by changing the speed of it. Too. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of that. So exactly the same again. That's coming through plus K, so I'll go to sample, empty pad. And that's fine. Then we'll go and have a look at that. So, I'll crop that. Quite like that. Now, what I might want to do is to create so we can see there's quite clear here. It's one, two, three, four, for example. I might want to create a loop of that. So if I was to duplicate that and then over here put stretch on for a bar creates all kinds of interesting things obviously if I wanted that to stay pitched then 
I would have to send that back through the tuner again. Uh, what it might be is I could turn that into a kick drum. So I do one shot, a little bit of attack. Might want to make that. Just this bit here. So obviously, point being, I've made something into something completely different. And I might want to use the second half of that as another single cycle. So if you can see roughly, that's about the shape of it. In fact, it's easy to see on the second one. And then I'll loop that again. And the process can continue. So obviously, I might want to, for example, if I go into this here, drag that down, and then this time, that's going to go, let's put that into Mammoth, for example. Now you can see that's not coming through channel 2 yet, so I'm going to change that to channel 2. If I reduce that, it's at two bars at the moment, it's quite a short sound, so if I just do one. Can hear there's like a little clip on the beginning there so again might want to just increase the attack and then let's resample that and again if you want to take a single cycle cycle of that you can hear the difference between that one and the next one then obviously, wherever you take the single cycle from, that's going to change the actual feel of the loop itself. So again, attack, a bit of release. It's got quite some nice little harmonics and stuff there. But as you can see, all I'm doing here creating a little palette of sounds purely by resampling that I can then effectively use as all of the, the sort of tones and things that I need to build the track. And once I start building the track, if I want to go back and add an extra texture, it's just a simple case of running something back through the resample rig and then grabbing that extra texture and just keeping on going with it there. And that's essentially, that's my AUM resampling workflow. Hopefully that's interesting, useful, beneficial on some level, and that you get something out of it. Thanks for watching. Oh.